Why do these modern diesel engines just not hold up as well as these older diesel engines once did? Well, as a diesel mechanic, I'm gonna tell you five reasons why these modern engines just don't hold up like they used to. Welcome back, I'm Alex, and today we've got a couple diesel engines to work with. First of all, we have this 1995 7.3 liter power stroke diesel in this F350. Over here, we have a 2024 6.7 liter power stroke in this F350. And you would think with almost 30 years of improvement in this diesel engine, it'll be light years ahead of this old 7.3. In almost all circumstances, that is the truth. This thing puts out way more power, better acceleration, better throttle response, better economy, less noise, better towing. But there are two key areas where I feel like this engine, in my opinion, falls short of that old 7.3, and that is reliability and longevity. The first reason why this old girl will outlast and be more reliable than those modern fancy diesels is the lack of EGR or exhaust gas recirculation. EGR was mandated for on-road diesels in 2002, and basically what it does, it takes a portion of the exhaust gas, brings it back in to the intake to be reburned through the engine. Doing so allows for a couple of things. First and foremost, it lowers the cylinder temperatures of the engine because as we bring that recirculated gas back around, it contains less oxygen. Less oxygen means the cylinder temps aren't gonna get as high. And most critically, with lower cylinder temperatures, we're not gonna create as much NOx gas out of the tailpipe. And that's the main reason why EGR was implemented in 2002. The problem is, is that diesel engines produce a lot of soot very naturally. And so when we bring that soot back around, it has to go back through the engine and that soot is very abrasive. So having a diesel engine constantly breathing in EGR gas with that carbon or soot particulate matter going through it, it's just can cause a lot of problems. It can clog sensors, intake manifolds, intake valves. It can get into the oil. It can cause piston ring wear. So it's just really not healthy for a diesel engine. Here's a Cummins engine I'm working on and just look how much soot is going through the intake because of that EGR. All right, we've got everything apart here. Here's our EGR valve. Now again, guys, just look at how much soot and carbons in there. Just, yeah, all going into your intake. Now this is our intake pipe here. And you guys can see that's literally what's inside your intake pipe, condensation and carbon buildup. And I mean, that's literally what's going into your cylinders. <laughs> kind of crazy. This is the pipe I took off again. That right there, that's all going into your intake. And let's take a peek in the 6.7 Power Strokes intake to see what we're dealing with. We got part of the intake off. Well, the, where, this is where the uh, EGR gas would actually go into the intake and then down to each each bank. And well, let's take a look inside here. It is just full of carbon, full of soot. I mean, there's an EGR temp sensor just full of carbon. Even looking into our intake there, not pretty. I mean, you know, it's just, it's full of carbon, full of soot. That's running right into your engine. And in my opinion, that's why having EGR is just not really good for the longevity of the engine. Um, in terms of reliability, I mean, look at all the electronics. This is your EGR um, valve actuator. This will have communication back to your PCM or ECU. Again, here's an <laughs> EGR temp sensor. We got a bunch of sensors to make sure we're running the right amount of flow or EGR flow into the engine, all of which can fail. And when they do fail, it's an emissions related code which will derate the engine. Not only are you sending sand or, or a very abrasive particulate through the engine, you also have a lot more failure points with an EGR system. And lastly, this engine is pretty much brand new. We just have over a thousand miles on it. We got that much carbon already run through the engine. Think about what happens after a hundred thousand miles, 200,000 miles, all of that abrasive carbon running right through that engine. See the intake on this old engine? It's just clean. You just get fresh air coming through. I mean, maybe there's a little bit of oil past the turbo, but that's just how she goes with 400,000 kilometers. But your intake going to each bank is just clean air. There's no carbon or soot going through the engine. And well, now that we've entered the world of emissions, that's reason two and three why these modern diesel engines just aren't as reliable. 
First up, diesel particulate filters or DPFs. DPFs or diesel particulate filters were introduced in 2007 on most on-road diesel applications. What these filters do is they take out the black soot or the diesel particulate matter from the exhaust. And while these things are fantastic at cooking up a lot of check engine lights, multiple sensors that could and probably will fail, as well as the good old regen. A regen, like most of you guys know, is when there's too much soot in the DPF and it needs to be burned off. What Ford does is they actually spray raw fuel into the exhaust to elevate the temperature in the DPF to burn off that soot. And well, the diesel particulate filters, they only have a limited amount of life. They do work very well at filtering that diesel particulate matter out of the exhaust but they're also very reliable at creating headaches down the road and just something that an old diesel you just don't have to worry about next on the chopping block and the third reason why these modern diesels just aren't going to hold up as long is this little puppy right here diesel exhaust fluid and diesel exhaust fluid is used in combination with the scr or the selective catalytic reduction in order to further reduce NOx gases out of the tailpipe. Diesel exhaust fluid as well as the SCR system was introduced for most on-road diesels in 2012 to meet new emission standards. And in my experience and opinion, it is the least reliable emission component. Um, I change NOx sensors like they're going out of style. All right, this is a NOx sensor, pretty critical on any diesel emission system. Two good things here. The first thing is the threads got stripped out with it. Fantastic. Second thing is it's wonderful that these are worth $1,200 new, and uh, we change them like candy on all these trucks. This one's getting a knock sensor in it too. It's not even my truck. This is my truck over here. $1,200, it's a pop. Uh, def actually freezes or can freeze in the winter, so your def tank has to be heated. Def headers fail. Every single def line has to be heated. Get your def metering unit, your def injector into the actual SCR all of which can fail and there's all kinds of electrical components and sensors to go along with that that can also fail and when they do fail it throws a emission check engine light which once again will derate the engine and it's off to the dealership to get their software to see what's going on and that leads me to my last point when it comes to emissions usually when an emission component fails it can be a lengthy diagnostic time because often it's not just a single check engine light, it's usually three or four, and it takes the technician a little bit of time to diagnose what the hell has gone wrong. And oftentimes, and I've done it myself, where you think a component is the problem, you change it, you release the truck, clear the codes, and the truck's back the next day with the same codes. So as you guys who own modern diesels have probably experienced, it can be very frustrating trying to diagnose what that check engine light actually means. Whereas this old girl has none of that. No EGR, no DPF, and no diesel exhaust fluid or DEF. And that alone makes these old diesels just so much more reliable. The fourth reason why these old girls are just so much more reliable than the newer modern diesels is because of the lack of electronic hardware on these things. You pop the hood and you just don't see that much electronics. I mean, you can see the turbo right in front of you. There's no actuators, there's no wires going to it. It's just simple. Whereas this 6.7 Power Stroke, yes, it puts out a ton of power, but look at the spaghetti factory of wiring, actuators, EGR actuator like we talked about, sensors, here's another actuator down here for your intake, more sensors, wiring. It's sensor upon sensor upon sensor with this engine. and. You know, the performance is fantastic, but there's just so much more failure points, unfortunately. Now this big Bertha flat deck here is a perfect example. It's actually supposed to get just a normal F-250 with the 6.7 power stroke, but that truck with its 10-speed transmission would not shift into gear. Apparently, the 10-speed transmission was not receiving proper voltage, therefore it was kind of dead in the water, so it got towed off to the dealership. It's sitting in the dealership's lot, which is why we have this nice fancy truck here. This dinosaur, you grab the stick, you put it in gear, and you drop the clutch, and you're off and running. Now, again, I'm no idiot. A 10-speed transmission gives you much better gearing options. It also leads to better trucking experiences, better towing, better performance. But 
as that truck sits in the dealership lot, this old girl is gonna bring me home just about every time. Lastly on electrical, and I did touch on this a little bit earlier, but when these modern diesel trucks seem to have issues, it's off to the dealership for them to plug into it with their proprietary software. And it's just difficult for the average person to diagnose or fix these, these modern diesel engines because there's so much electrical software and componentry that you need that proprietary software to really diagnose what the problem is. And I know this firsthand because oftentimes when an older driver will come into the shop, I'll bring my laptop over to his truck and he'll make a comment like, oh, you guys can't fix anything without those computers. And I mean, maybe he's got a point, but realistically, when a truck comes in with a check engine light, that little check engine light can mean thousands of different codes. And oftentimes it's not just a single code. There could be four or five active codes as well as inactive codes that can all play a role in which sensor or which component has failed and we need that diagnostic software to lead us to that component where these older diesel engines just don't have that many sensors that much electronical things to go wrong and the average person is probably going to have a better time fixing these engines than those modern engines the fifth and final reason why these modern diesels just aren't going to last as long is the crazy high power output they are putting down this 6.7 liter power stroke is putting out well over a thousand pound feet of torque, which 20, 30 years ago was just unheard of. Putting out that much power puts these engines under a good amount of stress, all while trying to maintain the newest emission protocols, breathing in EGR gas, running lighter oil, tighter tolerances. It just, to me, does not add up to better reliability and longevity. So to conclude, the modern diesel engines are incredible working machines, very powerful, tons of ability, but I would argue not as reliable as they once were. And I think it's fair to say that the diesel pickup truck engine running a million miles is dead and has been dead for a while. The combination of high power outputs, emissions, as well as the electrical complexity of these modern diesel engines just makes them rather sensitive. And I would argue that a gasoline engine at this point today is probably a much more reliable option. So just be aware when you're paying for that big expensive diesel pickup truck, you're not paying for reliability and longevity like you once were maybe 20 years ago. Today, you're paying for performance. And if you need to tow 20,000 pounds down the highway, this engine, these trucks will do it with their eyes closed. Well, that's my two cents being a diesel mechanic for about 10 years. Those newer diesel engines, they just don't make them like they used to. Speaking of which, this 7.3 liter power stroke behind me it's an absolute gem. We're actually doing a little bit of work to it right now because I bought it, it's mine. Hopefully the start of a fun little build on the channel. But as always guys, let me know what you think. Do you like your new diesel engine or would you rather sacrifice a little bit of performance for more reliability? Always like hearing what you guys have to say. And if you did like the video, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. If you like cool stuff like this, do not forget don't forget to subscribe because we always got cool stuff planned. Anyways, enough of me. We'll see you in the next freaking video.